Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at a book titled The Psychology of Money uh, written by Morgan Housel. Uh, the book is more or less a collection of essays that the author had written over a period in time uh, which he has collated and added a lot more content to it and made it as a book. The book talks about the key flaws, biases and causes of bad behavior that affect people when dealing with money. It deals with primarily our thought process uh, around how we handle our finances and how it could be handled effectively. Uh, the author, like I said, uh, is a person who has written a lot of uh, documentation around uh, personal finance um, and economics and money in particular. Moving on to the summary of this book. There are around 20 chapters in this book or 20 essays in this book, uh, each of them describing uh, one trait or uh, behavior um, when dealing with money. Uh, and I would just go through the, the key ones uh, that I found are important uh, to be called out. Um, all financial decisions taken by people, the author says, are done after proper homework. There is no irrational decision making in any of it. Uh, his argument is that um, uh, the, the decisions are taken with a certain perspective uh, from the investor or the person who is making this decision uh, and that is what differs and that is what makes some decisions look very crazy. Well, actually from the person's point of view, it is a very rational decision um, uh, right? and uh, uh, hence the market also has to be looked at from that perspective. Um, the second point he talks about is around risk and luck, uh, which according to the author are hard facts in any um, uh, finance related domain. Of course, he takes analogies from other domains also where risk and luck play a huge role. But he says that uh, in the area of finance and money, uh, they become prime actors uh, and one cannot ignore their presence. And hence, we need to be cognizant of their presence in the decisions that you make uh, to be successful. Um, uh, with respect to uh, money handling. Uh, he also talks about considering the risk as a key element in your success as well as somebody else's failure and uh, not judge the person or be uh, very happy, happy about your decision making thinking that it is purely because of your ability while there could have been a lot of risk and luck that could have played a role in that. Uh, the other point he talks about is uh, that one should not feed one's ego using the wealth that you are building. Uh, and the less you do that, the more wealth you can create is his point of view. Uh, he, he talks about not really bothered about uh, the image that you want to uh, proclaim to your friends and relatives, uh, not worry about what they have to say about how they think about you etc. Uh, and not feed uh, this area of your ego at all. Uh, uh, using the wealth that you have, uh, you are trying to create, right? and you should not be building on unnecessary luxuries, uh, etc. Is this your point? Uh, following uh, an auxiliary uh, point to this uh, point is that uh, you should build uh, your wealth or make money in such a way that it helps you sleep every night. Uh, don't uh, don't invest in something. Um, because the whole uh, uh, aura around that um, stock or um, wealth making machine is being hyped up so much uh, and um, don't just invest in equity because everybody says that that is where the returns are high etc. Right? Um, think about what is your right strategy for you, what you think will make you peaceful and be happy when you go to sleep is another important point. Um, Following by this, he talks about compounding as a line item. We have we have uh, talked about this in the uh, book on um, uh, Charlie Munger as well, uh, where he spoke about uh, investing in something and staying long um, uh, without touching, without disturbing it. And the, the author also here talks about it. Um, the the primary problem here is uh, everybody knows that compounding uh, helps um, build wealth, but the issue is about implementing it. Um, uh, if you, the author also talks about key data points around uh, the stock market um, falling from uh, the highs it had. Uh, a lot of 
blue chip stocks also falling from their um, uh, previous highs 95 percent of the time in the throughout their life cycle which means there were situations where uh, people would think that the stock is going to go down and hence uh, sell the stock and come back etc right so um, but those th- those blue chip stocks have given uh, significant returns uh, actually right so how do you avoid the temptation uh, that the market uh, exposes uh, to you um, is a important point the author talks about um, then he uh, he says uh, always look at the wealth that is built by the portfolio and not by individual line items um, you all mean not, your bets may not always win you uh, the money uh, there could be a significant losers but if one or two big wins are there then your overall portfolio can still give you a decent enough return again the same point was called out by charlie munger as well wherein he talks about uh, throughout berkshire hathaway's lifetime uh, it was probably four or five big investments that they made which are key investments which have helped them win while there were a lot of other investments which have failed as well right so another important point uh, both people seem to resonate uh, the other point uh, which i think uh, uh, navel ravikant also spoke about in his almanac uh, book is around using using money to gain control over time uh, the ability to do what you want and when you want and with people uh, you want to do this thing um, is a very very important um, uh, return money can give you it's a dividend that money can give you uh, so uh, uh, building corpus funds or retiring early using the money that you have built so that you can do something that you want to do is the biggest return that money can offer you uh, other than um, uh, of course the other returns that money gives you any which ways right so this is another point uh, navel also spoke about uh, the uh, subsequent point uh, uh, the book talks about is around you don't have to have a reason or a goal or an objective to save uh, you can never think of an emergency situation that can happen in your life um, and hence uh, saving need not have a, a larger objective of buying a car or a house or an emergency fund etc save uh closing your eyes is as simple as that um, he puts it so um yeah so uh, just say blindly is the point um uh, the next point is around um the cost of success or high returns uh, has to be clearly understood uh, you can never get anything for free so, which means that if you're going to uh, park your funds in something say equity or in bank deposits or whatever it is uh, there's a certain risk associated to it there's a certain variability associated to it hence uh, treat that as a fee that you'll have to pay if you have to invest in that and not as a penalty so many people think that um, i have to worry about it only when the variability happens and hence i will pay a penalty then but no when you're making these investment decisions these variabilities have to be considered as a cost of investing in this and then uh, do a modeling accordingly before you think about investing in them is the other point he calls out uh, the next point is around um, we as people continue to evolve right but uh, uh, we keep learning we we understand the world differently every other day and hence we evolve as uh, better human beings every other day but sometimes we hold on to the financial decisions that we made um five years back or 10 years back and hold it close to us and not move on from that even though we have moved on uh, from the being which made the choice uh, to a different kind of a being and our goals transforming into something else which means that you should have ideally moved from that financial goal and set up a new financial goal for this new being that you are um is the point but we generally don't do that and it might hurt you is the is the next point uh the the next point the other talks about is around uh you should decide what game you are playing uh while uh, the the money market is a is a playing field you have and uh, not all of us play the same game uh for the simple reason that there could be a a, a day trader who is more worried about the price valuation of a stock in the next two hours while you could be invested in for long term um wherein uh, you don't care about what is the valuation of the stock for today but you're worried about it how the business is going to grow in the next 10 years and hence uh, the valuation improving right so 
if you just look at the price of a stock basis the um, market flurry or frenzy that is happening in a particular stock and then you buy it assuming that uh, that is a valuation right valuation of the stock you are going to be uh, doomed because it there could be a, a day trading play that is happening there and hence you should understand what is the nature of your game and define the rules accordingly and play that game uh, with the rest of the market right so that, that is another important point he talks about um um the last point which is very very important he uh, he mentions is around uh, how uh, throughout our life not just in money making but throughout our life um, we are fed with a lot of information in bits and pieces there is always not always uh, there are situations where you have a very clear narrative of why something is happening the way it is happening but using those bits and pieces of information you come to a conclusion you come to a, a clear narrative of why that is happening the same thing applies to the money market as well um, if you try to build models or if you try to make decisions um, thinking that it is the rational way of doing it and uh, try to do something around it uh, you will never be able to get a clear narrative uh, you will only get pieces of information which means that you have to play smart within the constraints within the data points that are available to you and be okay with the narrative that uh, works very well for you so that is why the strategy the rules of the game uh, are should always be customized to what is your need uh, what makes you to go to sleep etc and all of that and hence uh, build a narrative accordingly is the author's point now what are the key takeaways from this book uh decision making in money um, uh, need not always be rational it is very counterintuitive but it also has to be emotional is the other's point uh, at the end of the day like he called out you should sleep peacefully uh, with the decisions you have made uh, and not be worried about taking uh, a rational call just because an analyst said that is a rational thing to do the second important point is Uh, everybody should play uh, a game uh, of his or own uh, basis this is their life's goals uh, a stock market reporter can never understand um, uh, or be able to give you the best recommendation possible without understanding the rules of the game that you are playing so you need to understand the rules of the game and uh, pick stocks accordingly is the other's point uh, the last takeaway is and never live a life to pacify the people around you or at least in terms of money matters uh, personal finance don't ever do that uh, don't buy a car or a house or take a uh, a pricey vacation just because the guy next door did it wealth creation is like um, preparing quality wine it needs to be stored and untouched and be untouched for long with that we conclude this week's review i'll catch up with you with another interesting book the next week thank you